Okay, um, we're back to the inheritance and polymorphism business, and I have another example. It's sort of artificial, but it'll have to do. First of all, let's look at the UML diagram. <laughs> Excuse me, because that um, should make things a bit easier. We have a first class, which is a blanket, which is described by its size, the color, and the material it's made of. And we're going to have a static um, constant called sizes. And I guess I should have put in what kind that is. So let me fix that real quick here. And that is in my description here. And sizes, which is an array of string or close enough to that as doesn't make any difference. And let's, um, excuse me here. Wow, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here, don't I? Um, let's go back here to, uh, da, 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 da. what the heck is the name of this? Um, okay. Excuse me. And um, what the heck is this going to be called? I called it blankets.puml. And now let's try displaying blankets.png and see if that looks a little better. Okay, yes, there we go. It's static. Sorry about that. Okay, back to business. So let's start. Let's start over again. We have our main class, which is the blanket that has the size, color, and material, and we're going to have an array of possible sizes. We'll have a constructor, and we can get the size, the color, and the material. And we also have a static method for uppercasing the first letter of a string. Why do we need that? You'll see in a few minutes. Now, blanket has two subclasses. Electric blanket has everything that a blanket has, plus a voltage. The distance between the wires in the blanket and whether it's turned on or not. And it again has all of the appropriate getters and setters. And we have a method that says, if you tell me what the wattage is, I can tell you how efficient it is. And that's a function of the distance in the wires. This is a totally bogus measurement, but I just needed something that electric blankets have. The other subclass of a blanket is a weighted blanket, which tells how much weight is inside the blanket. And again, I have a constructor. I have the getter for that. No setter, because once the weight is sewed into the blanket, you can't change it. Another two string method and a method for getting the comfort level. And that depends on the weight of the blanket and the weight of the user. So there's my inheritance hierarchy. And let's go and take a look at those classes. So here's the blanket class, which has a size, color, and material. I made an array list of strings called sizes. And that's going to be an array list that's based on this array. The reason I need an array list is going to, I'll show you in a moment, but here are the possible sizes, twin, full, queen, and king. So you're going to give me a size. Now it could be upper and lower case. So I'm going to translate it to lower case. And then I wanted to use the contains method inside of array list. Words, I want to see if the size you gave me in lower case is one of these. And that's why I had to go through this whole long business with an array list. It's a bit more complicated than it should be. But for now, let's go with it. So if our size contains the size you gave me, that's the one I'm going to set. Otherwise, I'll presume it's a twin size blanket, the smallest one. And then I set the color and the material to whatever you gave me. The rest of the getters and setters are no big deal. And when I'm doing this to string, 
if it's a twin or a full, I want to say capital T twin or capital F full. So if you give me something that is not the empty string, I'll uppercase the first letter and then add on the rest of the word all converted to lowercase. If you give me the empty string, I'll give you back the empty string. I'm adding these little um, methods because it made it, first of all, it made it more interesting for me to write. And it's also a little bit indicative of what you might run into in the real world. Namely, you can't expect people to give you something that's exactly what you want. They might have it all in capital letters, or they might have it capitalized, they might not. And that's why we have to make sure that we translate it to lowercase. And when we display it for the user inside of two string, we want it to look nice. And that's why we're going to uppercase the first letter. In fact, let's go here and let's just do something real quick. So let's have a blanket. B is going to be a new blanket. And it's going to be, um, let's say, a twin size, or let's say full. And it's going to be blue, and it's going to be uh, flannel. Oh, well, that's exciting. Yes, these are strings. Hello, Earth to Eisenberg. Since they're all strings, I have to make them strings. There we go. And it's a blue flannel full blanket. Okay, cool. That works like a champ. And then we have an electric blanket, which extends the blanket. Notice, by the way, I can put as many classes as I want into a file. Only one of them can be public. In this case, none of them are. Now, if it's not public, is it private? No. It turns out if I don't put the word public or private, that's what's called default access. It's accessible to any other file that's in the same directory. And there's a lot of ins and outs and nuances that I don't want to get into here. But if when I leave off the word public or private, it's the default accessibility, which is exactly what I want to do in this case. And here are my private um, properties. And then here's the constructor. And you'll notice that I call super to call the super class constructor with the size, the color, and the material. I'll set the voltage. I'll say it's turned off. So when you construct a new electric blanket, it's turned off, which is probably a good thing. This is the getter. Remember, a getter for a Boolean begins with the word is, not the word get. And I can set whether it's turned on or not. Here's the voltage. And then when I want to set the voltage, if you give me 110 or 220, those are valid. Otherwise, I'm going to just presume it's 110 for the United States. And notice, by the way, I'm calling that here inside of my constructor so that I don't have to duplicate the code. A constructor can call another method inside of the class. And then I print out all of this stuff. And um, I don't print the wire distance in there. I'm not sure why I didn't do that, but it's not part of that. Um, let's do that and let's just do quickly see if that works. So if I have an electric blanket, that's a new electric blanket. And it's going to be, let's say, queen size. Uh, blue cotton, and it's going to be a 220 volt, and the wire distance is going to be um, three centimeters. Is that a double, by the way, or not? It's an integer. Okay, so <laughs> that's pretty widely spaced wires, but we'll worry about that later. Let's check to see if that prints out properly. 
blue cotton queen, 220 volt, and it's off. Perfect. And then here's the efficiency, by the way. Totally bogus measure, but I just need an example. So electric blankets can have an efficiency depending on the wattage. Now, what about our weighted blanket? Again, nothing new here. Again, I'm going to call the super class constructor. The weight will be the absolute value. So in case you give me some negative number, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Here's the getter and here's two string. And again, another totally bogus calculation based on the user's weight. Now, let's go back to our test method, our test program, excuse me. And this one I do want to be public as a class, and it's going to contain our main method, and therefore the class name and the file name have to match. I'm going to create an array of blankets that is populated with regular blankets, electric, and weighted blankets. So it's going to have all three types in them. Polymorphism lets me do that. So I'm going to have blanket. Let's call it blanket list. And that's going to be I'm going to use my curly braces to initialize it. The first one is going to be a new blanket that's going to be, um, let's say, a full uh, uh, maroon flannel. And then I'm going to have another new blanket that's going to be a queen size. Oh, let's say it's yellow and cotton. Now I'm going to have an electric blanket that's twin size. It's going to be gray and it's going to be in fleece. It's also going to have a 220 volt for Europe and the wire distance is going to be 0 0.5 centimeters. Finally, we'll have a new weighted blanket that's going to be um, king size. And let's see, what color should we make it? Oh, let's make it um, tan. And what material should it be? Let's make it wool. And the weight in kilograms, we're going to give it a 15 kilogram weight. Rather than ask the user for input, I'm going to just say, let's say that we're going to have our wattage. And what's the wattage? Is that a double or is that, um, it's an integer, okay. So let's say we have um, a 20 watt, okay. Power supply provides this. And we're going to have for the user's weight, We're going to have a double customer weight is going to be, let's say, oh, 72.3 kilograms. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to say for each blanket B inside of my blanket list. First of all, let's print them all out. Dynamic binding is going to take effect here. The first one is going to call the two string method of blanket. And for the second one, for the third one, because at runtime, we know that it's an electric blanket, it's going to call two string for the electric blanket. And for the weighted blanket, it's going to call that class's two string method. And let me just make that explicit here so we can see it in action. And oh my goodness, um, let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, well, that's the first thing I've got to do is get rid of that. Let's see if that helps any. And what did I do here? My electric blanket. Oh, yes. Okay. 
I forgot my distance has to be a, an integer. There we go, much better. And let's run that. And you'll notice I have a maroon flannel full, a yellow cotton queen. I don't know why it's doing that, but this is just amazing that um, my terminal program seems to figure out these colors. How cool is that? I did not plan that. That just I, I just found this out. I don't know how it happened, but wow. So again, dynamic binding is taking care of this. Now, here's what we'd like to do. What we'd like to say is for the electric blanket, we'd like to tell you what the efficiency is. And for the weighted blanket, we'd like to tell you what its comfort level is. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to say, if B is an instance of, I'm sorry, there's no dot in there. If B is an instance of electric blanket, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, and let's go back here and look at the get efficiency. We're going to say, is going to become um, Now, if we try and do this, it's not going to compile properly. And the reason it's not going to compile properly is because as far, again, as far as the compiler is concerned, B is a blanket because it came from a list of blankets. And a regular blanket doesn't have a get efficiency method in it. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a cast. We know it's safe to do this. Because we know that B is an electric blanket at runtime, we'll cast B to an electric blanket telling the compiler, no, treat this blanket as though it were an electric blanket, and then we will be able to get its efficiency. Similar, we can say, similarly, we can say if B is an instance of weighted blanket, then we can say double comfort. And again, we're going to have to cast it to the correct format. Um, and what did I call that? I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm having problems remembering what I called my bogus um, methods here. Comfort level of customer weight. Let's run that. And so for the electric blanket, we have its efficiency. For the weighted blanket, why does it say zero kilograms? Ooh, that's not good. We have something crazy going on here. Let's take a quick look and see what's going on with that. I gave the weighted blanket a weight of 15, correct? What did I do here? Oh, I used this on both of them. I need to use the parameter absolute value and assign that. There, that's much better. And there we have it. Now, why am I going through this whole big simus? Well, the reason I'm doing this whole big simus is log me in here.
And let's go to here. And to the assignments. And for the inheritance and polymorphism assignment, we're going to have an account, which has a number and a balance, a savings account, which inherits from account and adds a property, and a credit card account, which inherits from account. And in fact, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, I'm wondering why, why, why is it not letting us open the image in a new tab? Cannot be displayed because it contains errors. Okay, let's try saving the image. And I'll put it here in the files. Um, where is it here? 204. There you go. Now we can see it. So, wow, this looks a lot like the thing with the blankets, doesn't it? We had the electric blanket and the weighted blanket, which were subclasses of blanket. And here we have savings account and credit card account, which are subclasses of the regular account. What we're going to do is we're going to write a program called test accounts that creates an array of five account objects. We'll have one regular account, one savings account, and three credit card accounts. Then you're going for each account, you're going to deposit $2,134 and withdraw $4,782 and use two-string. Now, the two-string method for a savings account does not include the calculated annual interest. The two-string method for credit card account does not include the monthly payment. Instead, you're going to be using the calculate interest method for the savings account, and you're going to use the calculate payment method for the credit card account, but only if you have a savings account and only if you have a credit card account. In a similar way that in this example, I use the get efficiency only for electric blankets and comfort level only for weighted blankets. This should give you some idea of how these are um, parallel structures, so to speak. Oh, there's even some pseudocode here. <laughs> well, that sort of spoils the whole show, doesn't it? Um, let's go here and uh, sample files. Let's just open that up and see what it looks like. Couldn't hurt. Oh, okay. That's 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 for your main method. And I, I this one I, I am not using an enhanced for loop. I'm using a regular old for loop. If I'd wanted to use a regular old for loop here, then I would have said for int um, zero i less than blanket list dot length. I plus plus. In fact, let me save that as under different names so you'll have both of them for reference. And here we would have blanket list sub i dot two string. If I compile that and run it, I get exactly the same output. So that's using a regular old for loop instead of an enhanced for loop. And that is the mini lecture for tonight.